um, believe it or not, I had, I had a couple people reach out to me, two separate people direct message me, Hey, we want to sell our house or, Hey, we're looking nice. to buy, but it's just a matter of me putting myself out there yeah. and, and having the guts to do it. Uh, so yeah, my, so I went up to, uh, the owner of AZ and associates AZ and I was like, I got a listing. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> today's episode of Rise, Grind, and Repeat, we talked to Dallas from Exposed Media. He's one of Arizona's top real estate agents. He also helps realtors produce their own video content. Let's dive right in. Dallas, thank you so much for uh, joining in on an episode of Rise, Grind, and Repeat. I, I'm, I'm so excited for this. I mean, we connected a while back. You connected us with uh, you know one of our current clients, and I just love watching what you're doing. Um, but before we get, you know, too far into that, I'd love, uh, just for the audience to kind of hear your background, who you are and, uh, just learn a little bit more about you. So, uh, okay. Tell us a little yeah, more about hi. you. My name is Dallas Andrews. Um, I'm actually a real estate agent and I'm the owner of a company called exposed media. We create content for business owners, entrepreneurs to brand themselves on social media. Uh, really our niche market is professionals in the real estate industry particular realtors, lenders, title company, title reps. But a little bit about my background. Of, I've always been in sales mm -hmm. and some type of sales and marketing type background. Uh, my very first job <laughs> was working in hospitality in a, at, a, at a resort, you know, as a bus boy. And really, I had to learn how to please people mm -hmm. and kind of have like, oh, I learned customer service. So that was a great first job until I landed my very first sales job where it was at with a gym called LA fitness. And I was the shyest person you could have ever met. <laughs> um, I didn't even know how to start a conversation, but I got this sales job and I was like, I want to have this job because I want to be someone who's not shy. I, did, I hated being shy and gotcha. I really wanted to be different. So I, I knew I had to push myself and it was hard. And I, I struggled a lot. I failed a lot. Um, I, so many times I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm going to quit. But I just kept pushing through. And then I got good at really just creating relationships with people. Um, I got better at talking with people. And so I started to enjoy this like people business. Mm -hmm. And my business started to flourish in the fitness industry with LA Fitness. And I ended up jumping around different gyms. Yep. Um, uh, LA Fitness, Pure Fitness, wanted to Fitness uh, Works to eventually co-owning my own gym in Surprise. Nice. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Surprise, Arizona. Uh, me and my business partner, we grew a gym up to almost 4,000 members. A little, wow. A little neighborhood gym. It was an actual like brick and mortar. Like, it wasn't... Yep. yep, brick and mortar. We Full service fitness center. We had free Jeez. weights, machine weights, cardio, uh, group fitness classes, uh, kids care. We're open seven days a week. Uh, we had 50 employees. So it was... a uh, That was my passion, I, the gym I, industry. I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. So uh, my business partner, uh, we ended up having a falling out. Uh, he had to, he got in trouble with the law or whatever. So I ended up, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get out of this industry. <laughs> I mean, I like working out. I still work out today, but I don't have to work in the industry. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try something else. So I got into title for a little bit, you know, title and oh, yeah. escrow with real estate. All real estate, not yeah. like vehicle titles or anything. It's yeah, all just, real estate. It's real estate title, okay. like the escrow. So I got, I became a, an assistant to a title rep where we go out there and you try to get realtors to use, to tell to get them to use this title company. So that's kind of what my job yeah. was. And coming from the, the gym industry, you know, being in that sales, marketing, advertising, people business. When I was working over here in the title company I, and working with so many realtors, I started realizing, you know what, I'm on the wrong side of this <laughs> coin. I shouldn't be a title rep. Yeah. I should be a real estate agent. So what I, made you see that? So meeting with different realtors and realizing what makes the, what would make them successful in their own business, a lot of those traits I already knew. So I could literally talk to any real estate agent uh, from my background in sales mm -hmm. and marketing and say, you should position yourself like this. And a lot of them would get it. Uh, some of them wouldn't really get it. But I was like, you know what? Why don't I just do this for myself? Mm -hmm. Why don't I become a real estate agent? I already, I kind of know like how you should position yourself out there. Yeah. Uh, what the customer needs to hear to make them smarter, make uh, more smarter, uh, educated decisions. So um, I decided after three months of working in title, I, I flipped the script and I went and got my real estate license. And I did the, uh, 
I did it the nine day crash course. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they have all these, you can Jeez, go at your own so pace. You did it all in nine days? Yeah. So you, uh, you have all these different options, uh, go at your own pace. I think you can, you're allowed up to six months, um, before you have to like redo mm -hmm. it again, but they have an option where you can literally do like a nine day crash course. So that's what I did. I was just going to gun through it. Um, so I did the nine day crash course. And then what I realized is I don't have a, cause I quit my title job before I started. <laughs> so I didn't have a job, but I thought I would Full just see my head. Let's go. Well, yeah, I thought I would just, I thought it was going to be so easy and I'll slide right in through it. Um, and then one of my friends, as I was in real estate school says, Hey, and he owns a construction company. He said, you know, why don't you come work with me? It'll, it'll be cash. Da, 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 da. And I was like, you know what? I could use money this weekend. So I went and worked <laughs> with them and I really enjoyed it because he did recess lighting okay. um, and it was, there's a huge uh, market for it here in the Valley. Um, they, they, they put the lights that face down on your ceiling, but I tried it. We knocked out, it was a huge job. We knocked it out super quick. And I was like, man, this was fun. Like, let me know when your next job comes <laughs> up. And he's like, actually I got one next weekend. So one thing led to another, uh, we, he started booking so many jobs and we worked such so well as a team mm -hmm. that we were just knocking out these construction jobs for recess lighting that, um, I forgot all about real estate <laughs> and then eight months go by. Okay. I, I, I did the school. I passed the school. The school's done, mm -hmm. but I just need to take the, the state test and national test. Gotcha. So I forgot about, I was like, you know what? It's been eight months. I need to get in there and, and take my test or I'll, I'll have to do the school all over mm -hmm. again. I didn't want to do that. So, um, he was like, oh, you don't want to go to real estate school. Just keep working with me. <laughs> I but, need you. I need you. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, you know, I, I really want to do this. So I, I, I was like, I wonder if I would pass right now, if I just went and tested. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I did know this, that if I went to take the test and I failed, they would give me a percentage of where I would land. Yeah. And that would be a great indication for me of, okay, how hard I got to study the next time. Cause I'll let you take it again. So I think up to five or six times. Okay. So, um, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to, it was a, I looked at that day. It was a Friday and I was like, oh, there's one tomorrow, Saturday. And it was down here in Chandler. And I was, and I'm up in, uh, the Northwest Valley. So I was like, I'll make the drive. I'll take the test. If I fail, I'll know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I cram studied that Friday night <laughs> just as much as I could. My wife was, you know, you were doing flashcards and stuff. And so I wake up, i uh, super nervous. I go down there. Um, uh, long story short, I took the test and I passed the state and the national first try Crushed it, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I did it. So, um, I was like, now I just, so I went through the steps of getting licensed now that I passed the test that I had to. So I picked a brokerage, AZ and Associates. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's kind of where I met you, AZ yeah, and Associates, yeah. right? And it was kind of, that's what led me to become a realtor. And right out of the gate, my very first week, I think I landed two listings. Dang. Just because I, I got on social media, I went Facebook live. And I said, Hey everyone, I'm a brand new real estate agent. If you know anyone looking to sell or buy, da, 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 yeah. uh, reach out to me, direct message me. And you know, I just put, I just kept putting myself out there on video. Um, believe it or not, I had, I had a couple of people reach out to me, two separate people direct message me. Hey, we want to sell our house or, Hey, we're looking nice. to buy, but it's just a matter of me putting myself out there yeah. and, and having the guts to do it. Uh, so yeah, my, so I went up to, uh, the owner of AZ and associates AZ and I was like, I got a listing, uh, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and now what? <laughs> and, uh, he's like, yeah, congrats. And it's, it's, uh, with that brokerage too, they're, they're very adamant about putting yourself out there, be, mm -hmm. you know, you know, put yourself out there to the masses and attract your tribe and which I really loved. And it was a good way to start me in the industry. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what, I want to take this a little further. Now that I'm showing some success, I got a couple escrows done now. Throughout that year, I think that first year I did 11 transactions in my first year Dang. of real estate. Yeah. What does the average uh, realtor do? I hear different numbers. Um, I want to say, I've heard somebody say six like four. Eight, four. Um, somebody said 10. Somebody, Jeez. I would say like four to six is what, to the, six. what I hear most, but I don't think there really is a, a, average, like a set I number mean, that anybody yeah. knows that I've, that I've been told, mm -hmm. but uh, I was just trying to Honestly, I didn't know what number to shoot for. I was just trying to do my job as best I could. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the year, I'm like, wow, I, I got this many. This has got to be good, right? And so then, then the next year, it was a little bit more. And it's just, you just, I would say now, because um, obviously what I'm doing now, and we'll get more into it, is I'm kind of 
less and less in real estate mm -hmm. uh, just because I don't have the time to do it. But I'm still <laughs> staying consistent with about 10 escrows a year wow. um, just from social media. But um, what so kind of what led once I my short success in my first year of real estate, mm -hmm. I realized, you know what, I want to have this online presence where people can see that, OK, uh, they, they get to know me, like me, trust me on my social media channels. So what kind of having that in the back of my mind, I wanted to position myself as an authority in the marketplace where I can go to give constant value yep. uh, all the time. And I was like, how am I going to do this? Because like I'm a realtor and I'm busy doing realtor stuff. How am I going to also do marketing stuff and have the time to like, you know, think of the content and then produce it yeah. and all this other stuff and, and create it. So uh, I was already doing it, but it was, it, it, I was juggling. Yeah. So I was like, why don't, why isn't, there has to be a company out there that can, I can just hire, that can do this for me. Um, that's real estate specific. And there wasn't one, I couldn't find any out there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to continue doing it for myself. And then I started helping a couple friends. They weren't in yeah. the real estate industry. One they was, liked what you were doing. Yes. One was a landscaper. One, um, he's a, a general contractor. He specializes in like bathroom remodels. Yeah. And there was a pool company too. Uh, so there were like different, they're, they're business owners, but they're in different um, industries. Yeah. But it all came down to like, they, they needed the same thing. They wanted to put themselves out there consistently so people could get to know who they are, like who they are and trust who they are so they can earn their yeah. business. So I started it. It was kind of like me doing it for them. And I really got in the routine of things where um, a friend of mine, the landscaper was Eli. You met Eli. Yep. <clears throat> He's like, you know what? This is, you're really good at this. Uh, I think you have a business here. And I was like, you think so? And I was like, I've been looking for a business that does this. <laughs> <laughs> so we, d I decided to become serious with it. Mm -hmm. um, I looked up different names and what can I can, what I can call this. And I was like, what is it? I wanted a name that really ties into like what we're doing for people. And really the only word I can think of is exposure. We're giving people exposure on social media. Yep. Um, so that the people can discover who they are, like who they are and trust who they are all through exposure. So I was like, you know what, let's see if exposed media is taken yeah. and it wasn't. So I was like, okay, the name is exposed media. Um, so I started doing it for these three guys and then word kind of got out. I joined a few networking groups mm -hmm. and what's cool about networking groups. Um, have you ever been a part of one? I, a long time ago. So usually with networking groups, you can only have one specific trade yep. in that group. So you only one realtor, one lender, one landscaper. There isn't, and what I've noticed in a lot of networking groups, there's not a lot of people that do exactly what I do <laughs> to help people with exposure on social media. So almost any group I can go into, there's a need for, for yep. me. And what's nice about what I do is everybody in that group needs what I have. And they realize it. Yeah. And, um, so I started getting in a couple groups that Eli got me involved in. And it's like a lot of people were kind of like, what is it? What do you do? Or maybe they weren't brought up with social media. Yeah. And a lot of their business that they have at the time was just built word of mouth or old, the old school generation ways. Yeah. So they didn't really understand what I did or the, the power of it once you start it. And then, but slowly but surely they started like, you know, starting to trust me more. And then yeah. before you know it, like almost everybody in these groups was using me, they're hiring me <laughs> to help them with their exposure. Yeah. And now that they get it and they really see uh, the value in it, it's, it's a no brainer. Uh, especially they're all business owners and they get, okay, I get branding on social media. Mm -hmm. It's not something I do for a couple of weeks or a month or a year. It's a lifestyle change for my business that has to be out there. That ha it has to be happening consistently all the time. So now that I've kind of got this thing really figured out and I've pivoted a lot, mm -hmm. I've have different content ideas, but really what we focused on is video. Um, the one thing that a lot of people say, oh, I really want to do video, but they don't have the courage. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of procrastination or just a lot of things holding them back, but they do see the value in it. But a lot of times they don't get started. So what we decided to do is that that's going to be like our bread and butter is, yep. is little short um, not long videos, just talking head videos where you can position the person that is talking as subject A. Because at the end of the day, Exposed Media, we want to help make entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals, whatever. We want to make you stand out as an authority figure in your industry. 
And how we do this is helping you create content through video and other types of mm -hmm. uh, images and, and stuff that we kind of package and bundle together where it's nice because a lot of the, the the compliments we get is from our clients is like, I feel like like every day I wake up and check my email, I have something to post. <laughs> it's not, I don't got to like think of it. It's like, and it's, and they like that. And there's some, uh, some, one of our clients just wants everything like packaged, done. Like yeah. they don't want to be like frequent. They just want to get it one email and have it for the once, whole week. Once, once a month, here's the whole art of the week, whatever it may be. But I would say that's the... 0.1111% of a person. Most people are like, I love the fact that I can just check my email that day and I have something to post. I don't got to well, think about it. They don't have to think about it. It's like it all comes in in chunks or it comes in one at a time. It's like download post where if you get it all at once and it's like, okay, which one do I choose? What exactly. do I post? It's more choices and people get. So we, we have a, a month, a monthly content calendar where it shows. Um, so like, well, I'll use this example. If you signed up with us, like a package you would get mm -hmm. is. It would be for a whole month. You would get uh, some. You get four image quotes. Uh, we do customer review images where we actually take, um, let's say your your customer reviews from Yelp, Zillow if you're in the real estate industry, yep. Google, Facebook reviews. Basically, we take those reviews verbatim. We put them onto an image. We we make it fan look fancy for social media. So it's instead of those reviews just sitting in those platforms, yep. waiting for people to go find them, we actually take those reviews and put them in front of people. So, and we brand it to you where it shows like your colors, your, your business logo, whatever. So, and then video is another thing we have on the content calendar. So we have a, a various of different pieces of content and we have it month to month. So they know, okay, they know what I'm getting. It's, it's the same thing every month, mm -hmm. but, but it's, that it's the same content, but changed around yep. every month. And what, what they really enjoy about it is the videos because it's something they don't got to think about yep. whether they shoot the video or send it to us, or we meet them once a month and knock out four or five videos. Yeah. But the, the, where we really take um, a lot of the heavy lifting off is the editing. Oh, that's um, where all the time is yeah, spent. Editing. We, we put the headline captions, the captions at the bottom and we format it to the different social media platforms. So a lot of the stuff, cause people, Maybe they're not tech savvy. Yep. Um, what I've found is like our target market um, is, is just individuals who maybe don't have time. They have money to afford to have it done for them. They just don't have time to do it. Gotcha. So you've moved out of just the real estate focus and more individuals that see the value just don't have the time. Exactly. Pretty much everyone. I mean, it's right. And everyone says, oh, yeah, this uh, I want to do it. You start doing it, you film. And then when it comes to the editing, that's when it's just like, ah, mm -hmm. didn't realize how much time this actually takes. Um, one, just skill set and two, the, 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 the amount of time it actually takes. Um, one thing that I get excited about that you've been mentioning quite a bit is the power of authority and positioning yourself into authority. It's come up literally in the last couple episodes and, and that's, I mean, that's why I, I love content and I think it's huge, but I mean, why, what, what led you to find this, that that position of authority leads to, you know, opportunities coming your way? Well, I think, um, you know, me growing up, I read a lot of self, self-help business books and mm -hmm. entrepreneurial motivational books. And a lot of the, a lot of it's the same common denominating things as the, you know, like in sales, they always say it, you got to be persistent. Persistence yeah. overcomes resistance. Yeah. I like it. Um, uh, just the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So mm -hmm. constantly putting yourself out there. But I think a lot of it too was with me. What do I see out there on uh, with advertisements on billboards or commercials, whatever on social media mm -hmm. is once you start understanding brand and brand recognition, um, and that doesn't have to be just for a business brand recognition could be you as an individual, like your face, your personality. Yep. Um, so when you put your face, your personality out there and do it consistently over time, you're going to have people that just start to like you and you yeah. start to become more familiar to them. And Believe it or not, you know, humans gravitate to what they're familiar with. So if they, I mean, if you're looking at, if you're, if you take, then I know there's statistics on this where yeah. they, they take a couple different brands or people and, and they make a decision on what they want to go with. What the one they're most familiar with and feel more comfortable with, they're going to go with that decision. Yep. And a lot of that has to do is within your brain. I like to, I like to think, call this as planting seeds. Every time yep. we put a piece of content out there, you're planting a seed, right? Um, I know Gary Vee, if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk, oh, he's yeah. like, you got to put a hundred hooks out there. And I <laughs> definitely believe in that. Uh, Cause I used to be the person was that was opposite of that is I'm going to 
focus all my time and energy on this one piece of content or this yeah. video. And I put all this time, energy and resources into one video and maybe it doesn't take off nine times out of 10. It won't. Cause it's like my first one. Yeah. It won't take off. Then I get discouraged and then I lose motivation and then I just don't want to do anything anymore. But if you have the mindset of putting out a lot of content, planting a lot of seeds, you're going to, it's eventually going to grow and harvest and you'll be able to harvest it later. Yeah. Just like Gary Vee says, you got to put out a hundred hooks. Think uh -huh. about like when you were a kid and you used to fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually just did this with my son. <laughs> he's going to be five next month. Nice. But we went fishing. We had the little bobber, right? We threw it out there. And he's like, what do I do? Well, when that thing, that little bobber. Yep. When that thing starts moving, that means uh, there's a fish on there. You got to reel it in. So in the eyes of a business owner, when it comes to branding and marketing and positioning yourself on social media, think about you just got to put a hundred of those bobbers out there. Yeah. And you throw them out there and you're going to have some that just, you know, that start bobbing and you reel them in. And uh, I know that's a horrible way of thinking about it. <laughs> really but, in, I mean, the, really they, in the client. I, but, yeah, um, I, yeah. But that, and if you have that, men, that kind of thought process um, in, in mentality behind it is maybe this bobber that you threw out a month ago, especially on YouTube, a year ago, isn't bobbing right now. But let's say mm -hmm. a year later, now that sucker's bobbing. Yeah, because and it's an old piece of content and different platforms have different. Um, ex, um, uh, how do I say it? The where the content expires. Yeah, I know yeah. YouTube will just go forever. Oh, forever. Yeah. But like you have uh, your time, your your timeline or your life on your content on different platforms. But put out 100 hooks out there put or bobbers or a lot of deposits and just continue to do that. And you'll start to see that your the world inside your business is going to start mm -hmm. changing. Well, I mean, it just goes down to if you have that one bobber out there that the one fish has to find that one bobber. Yeah. If you got that one out there and you just keep throwing the bobs out there, eventually you're going to find whatever bait, whatever, hook, whatever that setup is that caught that fish and then you can replicate it. I think I, I love everything you're saying. I think the biggest thing that, you know, typically here is that balance of going all in on one video and then or, you know, doing multiple. And usually it's this one's going to look really good over the top, but to do more production value has to come down how do you help clients with that because it's uh you know that they, they have something in in their mind where they want this commercial that's mm -hmm. super over the top but we i mean you and i both know that you know coming down to production value but having 10 bobs out there bobbers mm -hmm. out there is going to lead to more more opportunities for them so i mean how what does that conversation look like or how do you help potential clients you know go down that path yeah that's a great question um with so I come right out of the gate saying, hey, look, these this isn't a huge production where we're going to have all the lights <laughs> set up. I'm literally just going to bring it. If I'm filming you, I'm bringing a camera. You're going to be mic'd up. Or if you're having someone you're doing an interview with, you're both going to be mic'd up. It's going to be talking head style video. Yeah. Maybe some B-roll. We can get creative with it, but it's not. You're not going to be in a studio because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, I try to get it so that they understand like it's simple. Um, it's, it, the more simple we can keep it the more relaxed and, uh, and just easy going, they're going to feel where they don't, I got to go to a studio and have all these like lights and mm -hmm. cameras on me. No, it's just one camera. And really we're just, we're going to try to keep this where it's low budget enough to where we have, we're set up for the long game. We're set up to do a, a lot of different touches, not just one video. Cause I'm trying to get them under the, the idea and mindset that, Hey, we need to do a video a week. You need yep. to be putting at least a video out a week. So if you look at our content calendar, I'll send it to you so, you so you have it. If you look at our content calendar, um, I have it where they're scheduled to get, they have a video going out once a week. All the other pieces of content, I always tell them is kind of fluff. Yeah. It's to get, a, it's, it's so that they're, they're, they have some type of branding going out yeah. until their next video arrives. But all that stuff is essential too, because it's, it's still deposits you're putting out there, but nothing is more powerful than video. Because it's because through video, people can get to know you like you trust you immediately um, through an image that I mean, you're looking at a, an image with a headshot on it. Yeah, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same. Um, I mean, I mean, here's here's a cool statistic for video. And when I tell them this, why they should do video and it's like a no brainer for them, because if somebody um, if you if you have a message through video, your audience is going to retain uh, 95 percent of what you said through video now if they read that same information on a flyer they're only going to retain 10 percent. wow really exactly i did not know that yeah so when i tell my clients this they're like well it's a no-brainer like because obviously at the end of the day we're just trying to get a message out yeah. and we want our audience to remember what we said 
because mm-hmm. they get they have their own lives to deal with. They'll they get life happens in their life. So we don't want them to not remember what we said. Yeah. And the best way to get them to remember is through video. So why not do more video? Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of statistics I can I can go over. Um, a, a video is just so powerful. So that's why we're OK. This is end all be all on our monthly calendar. Mm-hmm. We got to make sure videos happen. And then all this other stuff will just kind of fit into place. But to kind of answer your question, to really get them in that mindset where we're not doing a, a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. We're just doing little short videos to deliver little values of nuggets yep. out there um, to your audience. Because I, when I, then when I tell them about, it's about putting a lot of deposits out there and not just one hope and yeah. hoping, hoping it works. Yeah. But as you put more and more out there, you're out there so much. I mean, all my clients say this is once they've been working with me for a month, two months, three months, they're like, oh, I'm everyone, everyone I reach in or I run into or whatever out there in the world, they're <laughs> saying, man, I'm killing it. Or they see me everywhere. Uh-huh. That's good. That's what you want. Um, and then now think of it like this especially in the real estate industry, when there's so much competition, there's like 88,000 licensed realtors in Arizona. So everybody knows like five or six real estate Mm -hmm. agents. So I'm going to use this industry as an example. So let's just say you, uh, you're a realtor and you have a friend that's getting ready to to sell a house, but he knows five or six other realtors. You want to be on his constant uh, you want to be on the back of his mind as much as you can. You want to, you want to be out there so often that he just can't forget about you. When he thinks of real estate, he, he, all he can do is think of you mm-hmm. because he keeps seeing your stuff out there. That's how you want to, that's how you want to position yourself in any industry that you're in. Absolutely. So the landscaper that I, I help, the pool company I help, whatever it is, whoever I'm helping, they're out there so often that the, they're, their audience, their, their customers, um, their future potential customers, they continue to see them. So they're like, they're the obvious choice. Yeah. And the reason why that is, like I said earlier, because you're familiar with them. They, they, they've gotten used to seeing their brand, their face. And yep. it's just crazy with Elix. We hike every Friday. Uh, we were on a random hike and some guys are, you're Eli, right? <laughs> really? From the landscaper. He's like, because they recognize him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not to that level yet, but because he's- <laughs> Soon, soon. Yeah. He's got an awesome YouTube channel and oh, it's huge. And that's the thing is just, um, we want to be a resource to help people like get to that level because it's hard on your own. There's people that can do it and they're, they're awesome at it, but some people, you know, they weren't brought up with understanding cameras and how to talk on in front of a camera. And I would say the biggest thing, if you're going to start video, (laughs) everyone's always nervous. They're always uncomfortable because They're not, it's just, you're not used to it. And just like with anything you do, you're not going to know how to ride a bike or do anything when you first try. And you're probably going to stumble mm-hmm. and, and look not so decent. <laughs> but I would say when you're, my recommendation on video is if you can come out of the gate, just not caring what you look like, not caring exactly <laughs> what you say or how you sound yep. and just start rolling with it over time as you put in the reps and you practice makes you perfect you're going to start noticing you're getting better and better and better. Absolutely. I, I mean, couldn't agree more. I mean, t- first started this, him and I got together, uh, Dre and I got together and it literally took me a half a day just to say my name and the name of the company. Like as soon as that like camera hit go, like I started just sweating. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. It's very hard, but I mean, it looks like, I mean, you guys do a great job at behind the scenes and you guys are there a ton to help alleviate that. So let's say I get over that. I'm ready to go. What do I talk about now? Do you guys help with that um, in terms of what content they should be talking about? Or is it you got to come up with it once you're, you're good on what videos you want to do? We'll just shoot them, edit them and give them back to you. Or what, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually was just answering this question with someone we were shooting before I came here. <laughs> and they're like, how do you how are you able to give like pointers on in any industry that you help? And I was like, well, we actually boiled it down to a recipe where any video you create, it needs to fulfill these three things. You need a hook, you need to have a hook, you need to tell a story, and you need to have an offer or a call to action. So depending on their industry, because when we shoot videos, they really like it when we're there because we can say, ah, I would probably angle it this way mm-hmm. or I'd probably come out, approach it more this way to hook someone. But when we're not there shooting the videos, they don't have that support. They're just doing it on their own. But hook, story, offer, you want to hook someone. So like... 
I'm working, I just got done shooting with a professional who deals with reverse mortgages. And okay. it's a little different because it's mainly for individuals that are 62 years of age and older. Mm -hmm. It's not a product that sounds sexy. There's out yeah. there a lot. Yeah. But um, he's, so he was, we were trying to be creative on how do we deliver a video to really hook the people that would most be interested in this product. So the hook would be, are you 62 years of age or older? Are you tired of paying your mortgage payments and you want to live in your house without any mortgage payments? I have a program that you, you might be interested in. Yeah. That's a great hook. And then you lead into the story by saying, you know, and you tell a story. Sorry. That's oh, right. no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah you tell it. a story by, you know, using someone as an example. Um, just be very vague. Mm -hmm. as, you know, um, John Doe here, he, you know, he's 62 and this is what he struggled with. And this is, you know, what he was having issues with or this was his pain and this is how we were able to resolve it and you tell that story and you make it and a lot of people love hearing stories they, oh, they every, yeah they're, they're able to paint a better picture in their mind when they hear a story and it sounds more real and authentic to them and then when you tell the story and okay they, they you hooked them now they understand what it is that you're talking about because you know they they heard the story and then your offer or your call to action would be like if you're interested in this or you know someone that could benefit from this reach out to us. So with all the videos we create, uh, we have some type of hook, story, and then we offer. But also the layer we put on top of all that is it has to be delivering value. Mm -hmm. We don't create videos that's salesy, like you need to use, as if you're looking for a realtor, use me. Yeah. Um, you need to get, create videos that your audience and customers want to hear. Like what's going to make them smarter, more educated to make those you know, buying decisions better. Yep. And you typically do that with the storytelling part of uh, mm -hmm. that recipe. Cause it's, you got the hook problem. We might have a solution. You got their attention. Now is this where the value gets brought into the overall equation is during that, that time. Exactly. So like for, for instance, for a video like myself, I'll do a video about exposed media mm -hmm. is, you know, are you a real estate agent? Are you struggling to put content out there consistently and to remain consistent out there over time? We have a solution for you. Exposed Media actually has a package program that where we come to you and shoot videos if you like, but at the end of the day, we make it super simple because we do all the heavy lifting for you. We create the content for you using your branding, your headshots, images, and we position you, we'll help position you as an authoritative figure in the real estate industry. So more people see you, they get yeah. to know you, like you, trust you as their neighborhood realtor. And... Um, so when, when you go into getting, go into more depth for value to, to deliver that yeah. value is, okay, why do I need to do video? Why do I need to be consistent mm -hmm. on? So these are the things that I would do little sub videos on like, you know, why consistency is key. Yep. Why video, like we talked about the percentage that they would remember mm -hmm. from the message and just all these things. They're just so much content that if you get creative, everybody has a ton of content around them. It's just a matter of delivering and putting on video or, or creating the content that, yeah. that positions them as the authority figure. I mean, so many people have so much more value and knowledge and wisdom than they even realize. It's just a matter of let's get it out of you into a form that people consume. And I agree. I think video is the, the, the best way to, to do that. And how I like to show it to clients and stuff is, I mean, how many, especially when it comes to text, is how many times have you got a text and you know, you think they're upset, but they're actually happy. You can lose the the voice um, in that text. So what you're trying to communicate or convey might be received completely different. And so now you just lost everything. And then to your point, the the photo, it's it, it does good. You can build a relationship. But once people can hear the voice and how you talk and all that, I mean, sim something as simple as an accent, you have the same accent, boom, you just have that relationship with yeah. them. And now it makes them more familiar, ultimately allowing them to to want to reach out. I mean, I I love the recipe that that you do, and so I mean, are do you have have them come up with a, a script before you go in, or what? What is all that? that I try look like? to get them to do that, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's and, hard, and isn't that's it? okay because uh, just like today, we just came up with um, some things on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is just me asking questions, and it really gets the creative juices in their own mind working. You're like, oh yeah, we could do a video on that, but it's just if you don't have a script when I show up, that's fine. We can, well, I'll help get it out of you. Yeah. Like you said, it's already in there. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting it out. Uh, me and Eli, we do this all the time where we're like, oh, that would be a great video. Or da, 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 da. We'll just be talking. 
Um, but we're all professionals in what we do. Yep. We all have knowledge that we think is like dumb knowledge, but to the average person who's not in our world, that could be like, wow, I didn't know that. Oh. Like for instance, in real estate, like um, I made a video about this and I, and I know that video today still gets me first time home buyers. It's a, a quick little one minute video that talks about, hey, did you know in the state of Arizona, if you're buying a home, you don't pay for the real estate agent that's representing you. They're actually compensated through the proceeds of the sale of the home on the seller's side. So a lot of first time home buyers, if they've never gone through the process before, they don't know that, wow, my, so my real estate agent's free to me yeah. in a sense. Yeah. In their eyes, it's free. They yeah. have no money out of their pocket. There's so many times I run into first time home buyers that are like, oh, that 3%, I was actually, we were saving it for our realtor that now like, yeah, we're good to go. Cause we were, we were like six grand off from starting <laughs> the home buying process yeah. of going to get pre-qualified because we thought I want, we wanted to have all our money there. Yep. So now they're like, so this three grand is just, it's, we just keep it. Yeah. But they don't, cause they don't, there's nowhere that tells you like, oh, your 3% is paid for by the seller. Oh, there's nowhere. I mean, yeah. the, the whole process, I mean, it's tough. I mean, there's, yeah, so many different moving parts, different paperwork that's needed. I mean, yeah. So why I brought that up was because when I tell other realtors, when we do videos, like, yeah, do a video. Just, I try to get all of them to do at least one video that says that. Yeah. They, it's almost like, it's almost a necessity. Yeah. And they're like, well, everybody knows that. Why would I want to do that? I was like, believe it or not, they don't. The majority don't. So that's just a, a good example of, we feel like it's a dumb thing in our world because we're in our world. Yeah. But someone from that's outside of that industry, outside of our world would be like, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. So think of those little nuggets. You're like, that might be seem so small to you because you're around it every day that someone outside of your industry is like, that's great information. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, outside of getting in front of the camera and actually talking, that's the biggest people that are the biggest thing I think people struggle with. And it's not so much struggling as they don't buy into it. They don't realize it. And it's like, for example, it's like talk about marketing. I mean, to me, it's like, wait, you didn't know that you message a different way prospecting versus like to me, that's no duh, but like to most people, you don't know that. And that's the thing showing that um, gives the information that creates that aha moment that then leads them to reach out. And it's, I mean, so many people, especially the ones that are really good at what they do, mm -hmm. um, have the blinders on to majority of the prospects that would want to work with you don't know 99% of what's in your head. And to you, it doesn't look sexy, but if someone's trying to make a big purchase or whatever that may be, that that thing that you think isn't sexy is actually sexy to them and the information they need to get them to say, all right, I, I want to move forward with this purchase and with you. Um, there's just so much benefit to it. Yeah. Um... I 100% agree. And it just got to put your, just the like consistency, like don't be worried about the quality. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing I would say is quality will come. Yeah. Consistency is, is the thing you need to be focused on right now. Um, in any stage, it doesn't matter if you've been doing it for 10 years or you just started yesterday. Yeah. Everybody, the consistency is where everybody wants to be. Uh, the quality comes, mm -hmm. you're not going to have quality in the very beginning. If you do, you're, you're, you're going to pay for it, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. um, it'll yeah. come and it's just a matter of just starting getting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. It's just like when you, when you've hiked or you, you jogged down a road, <laughs> right? You put one foot in front of the yeah. other after like an hour, two hours, you look back, you're like, Whoa, I walked that whole way. Yep. And it's the same thing. Anything you start, you just gotta, you know, stay consistent with it. When you look back. Like I look back to some of the videos I've done and I'm like, I could barely <laughs> say my name. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you were saying, I can barely talk on video or not. I wasn't even looking at the camera one time, <laughs> but it's just, it's just practice. You know, practice is going to make you perfect. And look at Eli. He's awesome on video now. Mm -hmm. He wasn't always that way, but he does multiple videos a week and he's, and you know what's, that's another thing too. What's great about video is when you watch your videos, you kind of critique yourself. Yep. We're our own biggest critics. So we're yep. like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to lean a certain way. My next time I do a video or uh -huh. I'm going to, I'm going to approach, I'm going to, um, make myself sound different or whatever the case may be, but you're not going to have that, all that data on yourself until you actually put the videos out there. To exactly. See exactly. You got to put yourself out there. No. And I love it. Cause it's, uh, I mean, what you're talking about, Eli's doing it more. And since we connected and got that Dropbox link, I mean, we've been folding a lot more of that content in and literally, I mean, saw like a 30% reduction in cost per conversion because there's more touch points and it's not all selling and all that. So, I mean, even the stuff that you're doing, we're using it uh, on YouTube and Facebook ads and it's it's having a huge impact on the efficiencies of our campaign. Um, and that kind of leads me into 
you did those, we're using them for the ad side. I mean, what are all the different ways in which someone, all right, I get my, my video, what recommendations are you giving people on how they can distribute it? Um, I know you mentioned social media a lot. I can think of a few other channels that this could be distributed through, but I mean, what are you seeing? What are your clients? How are they distributing the videos or uh, what does that look like? So with the, the content we're creating, then the videos we're creating, they just put it on their social media. They post it on mm -hmm. their Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, and we help them with hashtags, especially for Instagram, because it's technically your SEO for Instagram. But that's a lot of they'll put it on there and then they'll be focused on, OK, what's next? Yeah. Uh, what's the next video? But if they wanted to go more into depth, like really getting that in front of more eyeballs that aren't already following them. Um, that's where I suggest like something what you do. Uh, I know that's kind of how we came into contact is I was looking for a great resource that there were their experts at Facebook targeting and retargeting. Mm -hmm. Facebook targeting, I wouldn't say is, I, I feel like anybody can do it, but where the, where you really have to have an expert is all that data well, targeting it right for one, but all the data yeah. you get and then reading the data, it's like another language. Yeah. But retargeting is where, where the magic happens because, you know, targeting everyone, anyone can plug different variables in there. Yeah. But when you get all that data back, if you don't know how to read it, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. You're, you're, you're honestly, you're wasting your money. Mm -hmm. So like companies like what you guys do, that's why, um, if you go to my website right now, um, it will show different packages on there. And I know me and you need to get together because- yeah. I want to really fine tune that where if they, let's just say like someone like Eli, he's been doing the branding, the brand recognition for a long time. Now he wants to take it to the next level where he wants to put some ad spend yeah. behind some of that content. Um, I, a company like yours where they specialize in that targeting and retargeting would be a great, was what I would recommend them doing if they want to take it a step further. Yeah. But let's just, but even when you're doing that, you still have to have that consistent deposits oh, of, your, of your branding. I would say that would be definitely a level maybe they don't start with. Yeah. But it's definitely something to keep on the back of your mind. Like, hey, there's eventually I'm going to be here. Yeah. But. So I think, I mean, to your point, the pay distribution is a huge avenue. Um, and it, for people to kind of tiptoe into it, I think you're, you hit the nail on the head. The retargeting side is, I think, where there's more value because it, it costs more to try and acquire a new customer, reach uh, someone for the first time. But it's like, say I go to your website and I leave. All this new content that you're you're pumping out every week, you just throw that into the ads. And me, as I'm I'm on Facebook, it's like sponsored posts, and it's one video, and then a couple of days later, it's another video, and then it's another video. And it's like, dude, this guy is everywhere. I I see him everywhere, and then you're not taking a ton of budget to reach new people prospecting. I mean, unless you have ten thousand people visiting your website a day or whatever it may be. But um, had someone on, and then he's huge on the credibility gap, and I think that's where what you're doing there's huge value, and it's all right, I heard from a friend about you. I'm going to go check you out. Now that I leave, all of a sudden I'm seeing all this, this different content being retargeted. Follows you. Exactly. And now it's instead of, I mean, I'm sure most people can, can relate to where it's like, all right, I went and saw Nike, so a pair of Nike shoes, I leave, and that's the only pair of shoes I see. It's like, that's one piece of it, but there's so much more value and now show other shoes and show other, like that's where people are going to build that, that familiar, familiarity. It's tough yeah. one to say. Familiar, yeah. Familiar. They become more familiar with you. Um, and that's where it's going to come in. But if you had the one video or one graphic or whatever, it just it gets stale. And so, I mean, you're, you're setting people up for such a prime opportunity to really re-engage with people that left their site that didn't convert to get them to come back and build that relationship. And mm -hmm. I mean, even outside the paid, I mean, you're doing a lot from the SEO. If you were to build pages around it, like mm -hmm. web pages or a blog um, and even email distribution, I think. Yeah. It, and I... It, and that's one thing I, I communicate very clearly to my clients is I'm the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> like this is like, this is just the start. Like mm -hmm. welcome to this world. There's so <laughs> much you can do outside of this, but this is the most cost effective. Like this is the beginner stages. And that's the thing too, is where I position myself is I'm putting myself out there as a resource to help entrepreneurs, whether they're new or been in the business for years to really start having a presence on social media if they haven't already. So in one of my business networking groups, there's a, a gentleman that I, he's an older gentleman who's, he wasn't brought up with social media. Mm -hmm. It was almost like he was, it was, he didn't have any knowledge of it. He still today the, barely logs in, <laughs> but we help him with his social media content. We actually have a service where we post for him. So okay. that's an add on that we do. Yeah. So 
uh, he has a testimonial video we're actually going to be putting out there where he says, yeah, I get, I'm getting business from my, my Instagram, my Facebook. I don't even log in. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be but, a good one. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing. He's just because before he wasn't putting himself out there at all. Zero. Yeah. So now that he actually has a presence out there, let's just say if someone says, hey, reach out to so-and-so. He does this. And when most people either are going to Google him or look up on Facebook. Exactly. Uh, I think more of the younger generation is going to look him up on Instagram and yeah. Facebook. And if they see that they actually, like you were saying, they they have credibility on there. Mm -hmm. That's already they're like, okay, this is I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna call the guy now. I'm gonna direct message him right there. Since face, what one thing that's great about Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn is they're their own CRMs. Like yeah, exactly. when they're when they're finding you and they they'll just say, wow, this guy does look pretty legit. They can message you right there. Now if they're googling you and you find your website. Which, by the way, websites, I just feel like they're uh, an online business card. That's all it is. There's no, a lot of websites don't have direct messaging. Nobody, nobody's going to call. I mean, people do that, but mm -hmm. if there's a way to not call and make it easier, like texting or direct yeah. messaging, people love that. Oh, yeah. They don't want to call you. So uh, until they put direct messaging on websites, like right now, the Instagram, Facebook, that's why I get so many DMs and private messages from people who are discovering me because it's an easy, little approach they send a message yeah they don't got to call me and like because they're feel they're, they have some fears and doubts with themselves and like i'm gonna call this person unless they're super interested and it was like a hot referral mm -hmm. then they're gonna call but if it's not like that hot you want to have some type of way where you can get them to text you instant message you and that's why i love the social media platforms because it's already set up for that a absolutely um no and i i totally agree um and before we kind of get into what the future looks like for you kind of want to Saw something recently this last week. You got an award, right? Oh, uh, the what uh, was it? top 100 oh, yeah, yeah. top. Yeah. What was it? So out of the state of Arizona, which there's about, I think, I don't know, 80 something thousand licensed realtors. They did a list of the top 100 real estate agents on social media. And I, became, I came in number five. <laughs> nice. That's, yeah. that's awesome. And what, where I'm going with that is that's a huge testament to what you're doing now. I mean, you're, you're still in the real estate. You're still, you know, helping helping clients either buy or sell homes, but you're also running exposed media. And something that you said before this was you've kind of come down on the amount of like activities, like the things that you're quote unquote supposed to do in order to sell uh, or get listings. But I mean, you know, you just got this, you're doing a lot on, on social media to where it's like, but with the content you're posting, it allows you to free up some of your time. Cause you don't need to be doing all the emails and dials and all that type of stuff because it creates that inbound opportunity. I mean, would you say that, because of all the content you're producing, that's what kind of sets you up to where you can do that this year? Yeah, especially, um, that's a great question, especially in real, the real estate industry. Um, and I can say this because I'm in the industry mm -hmm. as a, a realtors, they'll, they'll, they'll sell a home or help someone buy a home and then they're off to the next sale. Okay, what's, yep. where's, the next, where's the next piece of money coming from or what's the next deal? Um, where I think realtors, and this can tie into any business, by the way, but I'm going to talk about real estate industry right now is... 88% of um, clients out there, whether you bought or sold, would love to have used the previous real estate agent that helped them, but only 11% actually do. And the reason why that is, is because the follow-up isn't there. It's because we're always off to the next deal, the next mm -hmm. deal. But where it allows me um, for what I do is I stay consistently in front of the people. Because that's the thing. If, if you bought or sold and I was your realtor, I try to friend you on social media and I want to mm -hmm. know, I want to know like when your birthday happens or when your anniversary is so yeah. going to send you a gift. So I'm always like trying to connect with you on social yeah. media. But since I do that and they constantly see my stuff out there, if they decide, okay, they, I help someone buy, but let's say a few years later they want to sell, but they're seeing me out there a lot. It's helping my, my repeat business and my re, my repeat customers and referrals really, it really positions me out there where I'm getting the, that business versus losing that market share to another realtor because I'm so consistent putting it out there. So to answer your question on that is, yeah, it is. It's, yeah. I have so much momentum because I've been doing this for a few years now as a realtor that I have so much content out there and I continue to put content. I'm not stopping. Yeah. And uh, even though I'm not doing the, the tedious stuff, like calling leads of people that yeah. I don't even know, and they don't know me, <laughs> like, why would I want to call them? And yeah. they don't want to hear from me. Yeah. Why not? grow my business from people who already know me, like me, trust me. Mm -hmm. You do that by positioning yourself a certain way on social media where it, it's inviting those people. It's like, oh, Dallas, yeah. Oh, he's not out of real estate. 
he still does real estate. All right, let's use him. Yeah. Because people forget. And like I said, when everybody knows five realtors, yep. they're, maybe they forgot that you were a realtor. I have lost deals, by the way, to close friends that they're like, dude, honestly, I forgot that I didn't even <laughs> yeah. think about it. But yeah. it was just, it's rare, but um, maybe they weren't on, actually one of them wasn't even on social media. That's but, why. Uh, and it was my fault too, because I sh you should be touching your past clients at least seven times a year. Like either yeah. giving a like, hey, how are you doing? That was my fault. That one fell through the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. But I try to at least send everybody a Christmas card, like bare minimum. Mm -hmm. and if I have your birthday on file, I try to send you, you know, a gift card, something on your birthday anniversaries. I look for every excuse to try to give you a call. Yep. No, I love it. And I mean, to the people that say, oh, I don't have the time to do this. It's like, well, let's let's take a step back. I mean, all the time you're spending trying to reconnect, mm -hmm. um, whether it's calling or emailing, you could stop doing that and produce more of these videos. Mm -hmm. And automatically you're going to stay top of mind to all those people anyway. So mm -hmm. it's like in reality, it doesn't take a whole lot more time. It's just shifting where you're focusing your time. And and I think posting on social media on a consistent basis is going to yield a lot more than all right, here's my 20 people I got to dial today because their birthday is this month. Like, yeah. it's just. Here's a here's another example I want to talk about is like a pool uh, maintenance and servicing company. Mm -hmm. They weren't on social media the way they should be. And they were in one of my networking groups. And I want to use this example because it's perfect. So there's like, well, what we could, what could we do on social on our Instagram or our Facebook? I was like, do before and after. Take a picture of a pool <laughs> that's nasty and take a picture of it after you guys did your work. And just do stuff like that. Or if you do, they do remodels too. Mm -hmm. do That'd it where be the, a big one. Do it where the pool's like before you start and do a, a, an after picture. So all he did was he put together about four or five. He sent us about four or five uh, before and afters, mm -hmm. different um, pools and stuff. We created the content where it was a cool looking image with his branding and his colors, whatever. He put it on his Instagram or Facebook or maybe both. Um, I think he did both. But he, the next time I met him a month later, he's like, dude, I got seven new accounts just from <laughs> and they said they saw these and just because they saw like the work we do and it was a direct testament of what we do it was our social proofing yeah that it, i earned proof. their i earned their business and then did you ask him like hey why has it been so many months since we last talked why aren't you doing this on a monthly basis <laughs> yeah so <laughs> now he does it now it's like he does yeah. it all the time now he gets it yep. he gets the value behind it is because people got to see what you're doing just like as a realtor obviously i don't really have before and afters unless i'm flipping homes mm -hmm. But I have other stuff I can use. I can do, you know, property posts, you know, yep. cool, like under contract, just listed. And, and, you know, let the world know and let your followers know, like, you're busy. You got yeah. stuff going on because that's the worst feeling is like, they're like, well, I want to use him, but it doesn't look like he's sold a lot of houses <laughs> Doing lately. Much, yeah. Yeah. Is he going to be fresh in the market? Um, that's why a lot of people don't want to use their aunt may that maybe <laughs> sold a house two years ago mm -hmm. they want to use a realtor that's a heavy producer that's that knows the market that so if something does go sideways they're confident in them being able to handle it yep um and you position yourself as that realtor or as that individual in your industry that looks like you do a lot of work because uh and nothing's going to stop you and people want to be people success brings nope. people to you like if they see that you're successful they want to be a part of that and uh yeah you just become become a celebrity in your own industry hmm. and people will they want to get to know you number five out of eighty thousand people that's a celebrity status right there for sure yeah um no this has been great i mean i i can agree with you more on on pretty much every every piece of topic i mean you're doing a lot between real estate and and running exposed media it's a, it's a bit of juggling i mean i've seen that you guys are hiring i mean it's a lot what is the next six months look like for you individually and what are you going to continue to try and split your time? Or are you going to be trying to focus more on exposed or what does your future look like? So, um, exposed media is growing vastly. Um, it's one of the things that I am trying to automate as much as I can. We just partnered with a company called uh, design pickle. So we actually, a lot of our designers are coming straight from design pickle now, which is nice because mm -hmm. They already have systems and processes already put in place and they've been awesome yeah. to work with. There's a few other companies that help us create the content we're creating, but we brought them all, you know, we all come together to make exposed media run efficiently. Yep. And that's the thing is I'm, I'm creating this um, to where we do run efficiently. If we get a large amount of business just dropped on us, I want to be ready for it. Yep. Like, so we just, we had a, a title company. They have about five individuals that just, we, we got five, all of a sudden five accounts 
Uh, so we we're making content for five different people and that all got dropped on us at the same time as a, 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 a mortgage branch mm. of seven people on the same day. So we were ready for it. Um, that was one of my biggest fears is what if we get all this business and we're not ready for it? Yeah. How's our turnaround times going to be? How we wanted it to be ready for. So our net, my next thing looking into the future is what if we get a 50 person yeah. injection to our business? Because what I'm noticing is as more and more people start to realize what we are and what we do, they want to use us. Yeah. It's just snowball. Effect. I don't really have, I'm not really marketing myself <laughs> because I really haven't had to. I've, mm -hmm. A lot of it is just, they see the content out there. They see it out there and they're like, Hey, who did this for you? Oh, Dallas or exposed media. And then they just reach out to us. So I'm, I'm trying to like play catch up yeah. on the, the customers that are, they're lining up for me yeah. to like, I haven't got to the position where I was like, wow, I really like, I don't have anything going on. I need to like make business happen. Yeah. It's just, it's starting to, that's, that's the thing. I'm, I'm fulfilling such a big need that there's a lot of people out there that need this need filled. 100%. They're just lining up. But I do, I would like to, you know, spread wider, go into multiple states, um, even nationwide. I mean, what we do, it, anybody can benefit from. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised I haven't found another company that does exactly what we do uh, for as cheap as we do it. So it's, uh, yeah, we're definitely, uh, the future looks bright. Uh, you know, well, you know, Eli. Yeah, Eli, you had him on your show one time. Oh, yeah. He, we've been friends for a long time and he's a part of this business entrepreneur group that I'm trying to become a, a member of. And I, I'm trying to get on that too. That, yeah, it's an yeah. entrepreneur's organization. Yeah. And uh, you have to have the right mindset. You have to be coachable. But what's really holding me back is I got to show that I have a business that um, makes a certain income. And That's... we're close. We're, I have a, I know for sure next year I'll, I'll, check every box requirement to become and to be able to to get into this uh coaching program mm -hmm. uh, for business owners and why i'm so like that's like my uh, goal to be in there because i know if i can get in there and surround myself with those types of people it's going to be easier for me to grow exposed media oh yeah because they're going to be able to tell me exactly okay you shouldn't be doing this you should be doing this this is great tweak this mm -hmm. and that's really what i need uh because i have all these things like a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm putting money out here, money out here. I'm bringing in help here and help here. And it's, it's, you know, you're a business owner. So it's oh, like, yeah. you have all this it, it stuff adds going up on. Quick. It adds so up you, quick. You, you, it's just, you just, we can get, um, distracted off of our path very uh, easily. Yep. And we're, we're, we're distracted by this shiny object all mm -hmm. the time. But yeah, I would say in the future, we're definitely, we're, we're, de we're, we're going, we're going to scale. Um, I'm making it like a priority too. as far as me staying in real estate. I'll probably keep my license active for all my close family and friends, but it's not like I'm out there like trying to like yeah. chase down people to use me. Yeah. Um, I never really positioned myself that way. There's it's usually, and that's another thing too, with me being in real estate, I've always worked with people who want to work with me. I never went door knocking or cold mm -hmm. call people. Like I don't want to work with people who don't already know me, like me, trust me. I position myself in a way where people come to me because they see me out there. Yep. And it's, and honestly, those transactions are so easy to work with because I, I haven't had to deal with anybody I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, that, that's awesome. And I, I appreciate your time. And before kind of close out, I mean, it's between, you know, the real estate and exposed. I mean, I think for right now, majority of the audience is, uh, you know, small business owners, uh, entrepreneurs. And I think the big thing that's sticking out is really the need to produce content. I mean, definitely a recurring thing, but for anyone that's, that's contemplating or, you know, should I start if I am about to start, I mean, what's the biggest piece of advice that you'd have for anyone that's, that's contemplating? Um, really think about uh, for video. Yeah. Talking about for video. Yep. So honestly, you just got to start. Don't be worried about, you know, trying to buy an expensive camera or an expensive microphone, literally your cell phone, you know, the, all the iPhones or whatever phone you have is capable enough to do great video. And then they have awesome mics on there as well. Mm -hmm. Just create the video content from your phone and don't be worried about like doing the fancy edits or anything and just, just put yourself out there. Even if you put a video out there and you have all your mess ups on there still and just post it, it's showing the authentic side of you. Yep. And if you're able to do that and put in on a consistent level, it's going to show, it's going to show who you are and people are going to gravitate to who you are. You never want to put posture or position yourself as an image on social media and then they go to meet you like, whoa, 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 this isn't the person, you <laughs> yeah. know, you don't want to catfish anyone. Um, but uh, also too is 
think about your audience. Think mm-hmm. about who exactly you're talking to. Because I think the biggest mistake a lot of people come out of the gate with is they make it too salesy. Like it's all about me, me, me. You need to use me. Or, or they may, it's always in a, in a position where it comes off as a salesy video yep. and people don't want to hear that. They don't want to listen to that. So if you can really think about ways of putting value out there to educate whoever it is that you want to watch that, like for me, five, five things to do, five things not to do when you're trying to buy a home. Yeah. Now, if someone is maybe going to buy a home, they're like, well, I want to hear what these five things are. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to come across to me running into one of these yeah. things. So I, but I put that out there as value. They're like, wow, I want to watch this video. It's, mm-hmm. it's just five things I got to listen to. But like, think of like little ideas like that, little nuggets of value where you're giving information rather than you need to use me as a realtor. And here's the reason yeah. why yeah. Or you're using me as a business owner. Here's the reason why give out, give, 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 the more you give, the more you're actually going to get. I, I couldn't agree more. And, uh, no, this has been great. I mean, every, like I said, can't say it enough. Every, everything that you mentioned, I mean, just where your mind frame is at and how people should be producing content and, and go about it. I mean, our minds are definitely in line and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the time. And if someone wants to reach out to you and, and wants to work with you, whether it's on the real estate side or even getting content created, I mean, how can they reach out to you? Um, on Facebook or Instagram is where a lot of people have been reaching out to us. If you search exposed media on Facebook, you can just private message us on there or Instagram exposed media was already taken, which is crazy because really? it wasn't taken. Cause I can't, when I search it, it doesn't pop up. Huh? So under Instagram, it's at E X P D underscore media. But if you type in exposed media, we, we pop it up. It shows up. Yeah. So that's a great way to, to reach us um, through the DM direct messaging there. Um, or you can go to our website if you want to. And we have a little bit about each of the pieces of content. Yeah. Uh, if you go to getexposednow.com, um, that kind of shows a little bit, has our prices on there too. And those prices are just kind of like vague. Most people that are interested, they'll meet with me one-to-one. Yeah. And um, you can call the number. Do uh, you want me to say it out? Yeah. Uh, 602. Three zero zero one seven six two. If you call that number, it's my direct line. And most people just want to either meet with me over Zoom for an hour or twenty minutes, whatever they yep. need. Or if they're local, they can meet in person. But we tailor fit programs for each person based on what they need and what they want. So the website is just kind of a guide to show based on packages. But I would say at the end of the day, just have a one to one with me. So that way there you get a better understanding of what you need to be doing and what it is exactly that we can do for you. Yeah. And then we'll tie it all under together because at the end of the day, we just want to help you. Nope. I love it. Dallas, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to uh, see the growth as uh, you continue on your journey. (laughs) Thank Thank you. Appreciate it.